Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves EGB here on FlossTube but also over on Instagram as well. This is my channel, it's a channel about cross stitch. Um, I don't say that often enough but I'm pretty sure within five minutes if you watch you'll work out exactly what, what it's all about. If you're new here, welcome along, it's nice to have you and if you're a returning subscriber, returning viewer, some of you I know have been with me since, since episode number one, welcome back and everyone's welcome here. I've had a really, really nice week. Um, the weather has turned, we don't have the howling winds and the gales, it's still pretty chilly unless you're in the sunshine but there has been lots and lots of sunshine. We've had no major catastrophes this week, it was Ness's birthday on Tuesday, she was five although I think overnight she became 15. Um, I made her a cake, I'll, I'll put a picture up here of her cake. You'll be able to see that it won't be a surprise that I'm not starting a YouTube channel about cake decorating. Um, it's very much of the chuck it all on school of, of cake decorating, um, including the chocolate dinosaur that was in the corner. She did request a chocolate dinosaur, but um, yeah, I just whacked it all on with a load of Smarties. So I think I've got away with it this year, but if there's going to be any kind of party or anything allowed next year, my skills are going to have to improve or it's going to be a bought one, one of the two. But it tasted pretty darn good. And there's not a lot you can't hide with buttercream. Um, for her birthday, she had a knife. Um, she's wanted a knife for a long, long time. Not a flick knife, she's not going to be hanging around on street corners or anything like that. But her and her dad spend quite a lot of time out in the woods um, and we do quite a lot of cooking and she's wanted her own knife. So she got an Opinel first knife, which is, the blade is sharp, but it's not pointed. So she's not going to be stabbing anyone anytime soon. So they are going to be learning how to use the knife properly. Um, so she's super looking forward to that. She's she's really, really excited. She had lots of other board games and things like that as well. Screwball Scramble and Dinosaur Monopoly and all sorts of dinosaur things. She's well into dinosaurs. So that was really, really nice. Um, what else have I been up to? Oh, the other thing that was really nice is she actually went back to school for two days. So in a completely unheard of situation, I'm at home and she's at school. It's never happened before it has never happened before so um, I must admit I did enjoy the peace and quiet for, for the two days that she was at school and she goes back to school full-time next week and then I don't start back at school until the following week um, with some classes so we'll wait and see how it pans out but next week is going to be quite nice I think I should be able to clear the decks quite well before we actually start back to face-to-face -to -face school um, I have had lots and lots of entries for my 6,000 subscriber competition and I'll do the winners for those in a wee while. Um, I've had a few comments about what I'd mentioned about Victorian Motto, just people saying that they'd had a similar, um, they were in a similar boat to me and then a couple of people mentioning that um, if you do wish to make a PayPal claim you do only have 180 days from the, from the date of the payment. Not that I'm suggesting that's what you should do, it's up to you to make up your own mind, but um, I didn't know that and I just want to pass on that information. I have watched quite a few floss tubers this week, so I've got my, my list, I have got my book here that I, I keep insulting every now and then because I don't want to forget anybody. So I have been watching Gable Stitcher, um, love watching her, I, I really really like all her projects and uh, her buddy Julie as well, Julie, uh, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. Um, I watched Brenda and the Serial Starter, I think that goes without saying doesn't it? You, you just watch them, you just watch them. Um, Made by Michelle McGraw has got a video out, um, she was off for a couple of weeks um, because her husband wasn't so well, um, I think everything's uh, back on an even keel now and she's come back with a bumper video with loads and loads of images so um, do go and check her out. Kindred Stitcher I watched as well, I love watching her. Um, I also watched Darcy Cameron, um, I've never watched him before, I really really enjoyed his video and I want to walk back through or go back through his, his previous videos. Um, I know he stitches a lot of full coverage stuff which isn't what I stitch but I don't mind, I like watching and talking people to people about stitching or seeing people talk about stitching. Um, Darcy, I do have somebody for your posse. Um, I'll put a picture up here. He's for your posse. He comes with the dog and the five-year-old. Um, it's it's a no-brainer, it's a no, no deal. You either take them all or you're not having any of them and I don't want them back until they're trained. Thank you. Um, and 
I have got three that I'm I'm penciled in to watch um, as soon as I can, which is Cynthia Brew, Stitching in the Light. She has done what looks like a brilliant episode all about red samplers and red work, um, red stitching. So I can't wait to watch that. Um, Hedro Stitcher has done another one, Rebecca, and a lady that I saw mentioned who sounds right up my alley. I've not had time to check her out yet. Um, she's called Susan Stanley Stitch in Time. Um, and Needleworker Ellen mentioned that she'd watched her and she really, really liked her. Uh, and I just love all her projects. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna go and check, check her out. So what have I been stitching? I haven't got a huge load of whips actually. Um, I have got one start and finish which you might have already seen on Instagram. And I've got another start, and I have got another bit of progress, actually, a bit of progress. So I'm gonna show you my start and finish. I'll show you my other whips, and I'm gonna have to pop and get my other start, because I've realized I've left it downstairs. Right, so this is the first, the first one. This is my start and my finish. And here she is, the gorgeous Thurza Hudson. Now, if you haven't already seen Whilst Iris Snap's latest video, she does a video all about Thurza and why she thinks she's pronounced Thurza rather than Terza. Um, I just loved stitching this. I really did. I stitched it on 36 count, picture this plus vellum. In the called for sort of colourways, but not necessarily the exact threads. The one change that I did make was to this sort of dark red. I changed that to Gentle Arts Weathered Barn because on the front cover, to me, it looks more of this sort of purpley plum colour, whereas my um, skein of what was suggested was very red. Um, and I don't know whether that's just a thing to do with the photography but it's what I liked I liked it with the slightly more purpley look um, and I was looking I was talking to Christina earlier on actually and uh, she said oh yeah there's a really messed up that tree on the left hand side there didn't she and I was like it's all right I've messed up the one on the right hand side <laughs> so yeah it's um I've messed it up in a different way but I have still messed it up a little bit but I don't care and on 36 count she's going to fit really really nicely in a nine by seven frame. And I thought I'd got a nice frame and it arrived and it was the most gaudy, shiny thing. Ugh, it was horrible. So it very quickly went back again. So that is her. Really, really pleased with how she turned out. Of course, I haven't done really anything that I said I was gonna do last week. So I do intend to do plans at the end of this video, but feel free to just turn it off and ignore those last bit because it looks like I pretty much did. Um, I did do, I have to show you my new frame for my, is that the right one? Spring Salt Boxes by Plum Street Samplers. Um, I thought I'd better do some work on one of them. This was a whip go, um, another thing that I haven't managed to do on my whip go. In my brain I am still persevering with whip go because I do, I do want to get there with it. So. I haven't ironed this one, but that's where I got to on the first of the spring salt boxes. So all I've got to do really is bring the white frame down and make the sort of um, Polaroid frame for it. There's a couple of doodads up there and fill in the windows. So not very much. I might even be able to get that one finished tonight. So I did a, a little bit on that. That was before I decided I was going to do Thursa. And once I decided I was going to do Thursa, that's what I did. Um, I started today, and I haven't really done very much on this either, on my Dreaming Girl Sal by Barbara Anna Designs. I've got the front cover in here. Do, do, do. So that is number two, that's ep uh, episode two, release number two. So we've started to get some flowers around her hair. I have 
done just a very very small amount on mine so on mine my skin colors are the same my hair color is obviously different I swapped her to gray um, with those darker Quaker highlights and then I've just started putting in the flowers and I'm going for yellow and sort of white flowers I think which is pretty much what's called for but I'm changing my colors just to suit my darker fabric um, I really really like sunflowers so I think I might try and put French knots in these flowers to make them look a bit more like sunflowers in the middle but we shall see I have to be in the mood for French knots and I am going to need to go and grab actually no I'm not going to go and grab it because I haven't done very much on it I started I'll put a picture up instead I bought a kit called Welcome Spring from the Drawn Thread when I visited the Nimble Thimble uh, when I visited Chris at the Nimble Thimble and so I actually made a start on that so I'll put a picture up of what the, the chart looks like and hopefully I'll have a bit more to show you next week it's all done in dinky dyes with a couple of NPI so it's done in the called for and I'm really really enjoying stitching with those dinky dyes they are so so nice to stitch with so that's my stitching that's pretty much it I'm, I'm happy with what I've done this week um, I can't wait to get Thursa framed and I can't wait to get that salt box finished because I want to try putting it in just because it's here I'll show you putting it in to this frame so even if I've only got one <laughs> it might actually give me a kick in the pants to get the other seven done okie dokie so shall we move on to the freebie let's do the freebie I have cunningly hidden the freebie behind the curtain where I can't really get to it there we go so the freebie is from modern folk embroidery now March is in the UK the month with Mother's Day in it and there is this beautiful little freebie from Modern Folk Embroidery. Now I will have a look back through my messages because somebody actually messaged me about this and reminded me about the freebies on Jacob's site and um, I have looked through my messages and I can't find it but I'll have another look through and if I find the name of the person who um, who reminded me about these I will put it along the bottom if not if that was you can you please comment in the comments because <laughs> I cannot find your message anywhere so it's shown in a frame there on the website oh, that's my squeaky chair again on the website it's shown as a little pin pillow as well which I think both are equally equally beautiful it is 73 by 63 so it's really not very big and on 32 count linen it's nearly five inches by four inches so it's a really nice size and it would look really cute on something like 40 count linen as well so really really dinky it would look lovely but whatever you did it on you can't go wrong with that chart so that is the freebie today right let's have a go with the winners of the competitions then I have been through and I used the random comment picker YouTube generator my bob and I have been through and I have commented on all the winners comments so if you've got a comment from me um, it will tell you what to do um, you just need to email me um, at mama loves UGB at gmail.com that didn't sound right with two ats in so mama loves UGB at gmail.com and I'll put the put it down below and give me your contact information so for some of them it will be your address that I will need to post out so for those ones that are going to the UK for others it'll be because I've got the chart that needs to be emailed out to you and for the ones from uh, Whilst Iris Snaps and from Galliana Cross Stitch I will be passing your email on to Elaine and to Christina and they will be contacting you about your charts so the first one then I had over 800 comments um, lots of people commenting for more than one thing which is brilliant but 
there was not a single um, giveaway that had less than sort of 150 comments. So um, thank you so much for taking part. It was lovely to see all those comments. And some of you are so creative with your comments. Um, just absolutely mind blown. So I'm going to go through the winners. I will put a little picture up there um, just so you can see their comments. So the first one is the Whilst Iris Naps chart. So it'll be any chart from the Whilst Iris Naps catalogue sent to you by PDF. And the winner of that was Peg Page. Congratulations, Peg. Um, the charts from Northumberland Sampler House. So we had three from them to give away. Jane was won by Penny. Emma was won by Shirley Moore. And Mary was won by Sally Folk. So congratulations to you three. I've got the charts for those, so I will email those out to you when you get in contact with me. And if you weren't lucky enough to win one of the charts from Northumberland Sample House, please do go along and support uh, support Anita. She is a conservator. She is making sure that these these gorgeous samplers last, and she does um, conservation work. She rebacks them. She um, sometimes restitches parts of them, and she does such such a lot of work for them. Uh, a lot of people think that she's a museum. She's not. She's just a, a single person trying so hard to work to work on these samplers and to save them all for us. So do pop along to their Etsy shop and download yourself um, some of the charts. And they've started making the the fancy little glass, um, I never know what they're called, floss drops. Floss drops, floss keepers. The, the, the bling that goes on the ring, yeah? The bling for your ring. Um, with the actual charts on them. So grab a chart, grab a, a ring bling. I'm sure that's not what that's called. And I'm sure if you Google that, you will get something totally different. So don't do that. Um, yeah, go on there. Then sticking with the PDFs, um, the zebra went to Martha Kay. Um, I've had a few messages from people trying to get in touch with Erna this week about the zebra chart. Um, I've messaged her myself and I've not heard anything back from her, but I will try again and get in contact with her. Um, like I said, I don't know her personally, so I don't know why she's not been in contact with, with people, but um, fingers crossed she's okay and you'll hear back from her really soon. Now, the four charts that were going to people in the UK. Now, I realised actually when I start going through the comments that I'd made a right blunder with these. I chose two common words. So literally I had pretty much everybody in America telling me that it was a cold day <laughs> in their neck of the woods. So um, luckily I did pull out a couple of people who were clearly from America because they had said that they were from America. But it was my, my own daft fault for only for, for choosing really common words in the middle of the worst snowstorm that America has ever seen. So, um, cold was this one. Baby, it's cold outside. And that one goes to Jane L. Um, oh, joyous day. Um, it goes to Emma Mitchell. Well done, Emma. And house. So house on Pumpkin Hill goes to Keely Evans. And joy which was this one, goes to Anna Wilson. And the last two charts were from Galliana Crostitch. These are PDFs. Um, I will be passing your names uh, and emails on to Elaine. The bookcase was won by Teresa Mitchell and the sewing shelf where the keyword was ought was won by Cherie Sayers. So I hope I've said that right, Cherie. Um, ought, again, I had this in the comments a few times. Um, I use it as old raggedy threads, um, old random threads, it sort of stands for as well. It's basically when you've been doing your stitching and you've got sort of like that little bit left, that's an ought. And so lots of people put them in a little jar, put them in a glass Christmas decoration. Um, mine, I don't know where mine go actually. I guess I must just hoover them up. 
<laughs> I do know where they go. They go down the back of the sofa. Not on purpose, but they just end up there. And then they, they also sometimes go on holiday around the house. Um, so they travel around on my clothing and stuff. I found one in the bath the other day. Um, so actually, comment below. Where's the weirdest place you've ever found an ort? I'd love to know. Now, the other thing about this is I spoke to Elaine. And Elaine has very kindly, because obviously um, there were nearly 270 people for the bookcase and 300 people for the ort, the sewing shelves. So that means that the majority of you will be disappointed. So what she has said is that if you use the code Galliana6K, which I'll put across the bottom there, on her Etsy site, you can have 20% off those two charts. So you can buy either one of them and get 20% off, or you can buy both and still get 20% off. Um, so that is a lovely, a lovely gift to everybody because there were so many people who mentioned those charts and who mentioned both of them as well. So go on, grab those charts with 20% off from Elaine from Galliana Cross Stitch. So I can't thank, I can't thank everybody enough that all those people who contributed to the PDF charts and to Alice who sent me originally those, um, those paper charts as well. So it really means a lot to me. Thank you so much, guys. Right. What else have I been up to? So you might have seen again on my floss tube, no, not my floss tube, this is my floss tube, on my Instagram, I have been, and again, going behind the curtain, I have been doing, whoops, I'll get that in a minute, I have been doing some fabric dyeing. I had great fun the other day during my lunchtime from school, while Ness was at school, dyeing these fabrics. Now some of them I was specifically dyeing for, like this one, which is going to be for Huckleberry Farm. Others of them I was just, they've got a bit, uh, they've got a bit of crease now, I did have them lovely ironed earlier. Um, others of them I was just playing around. Now I have done a video, I've done a tutorial about how to do these. I think this is one of the most cost effective methods of being able to do lots and lots of different colours using Dynaflow paints. Okay, so that's what I'm going to show you how to use. This little lot, I kid you not, took me about half an hour to actually dye. A little bit more because I was messing around with the camera, but about half an hour. So none of this leaving it in a jar for a couple of hours, having a look, see what it looks like. You can, can, you can see what your fabric is gonna look like at every step of the way with this process. And actually with these dyes, or these paints I should say, they are one of the ones which I think change color the least when they dry. So if it looks right to you when it's wet, it's probably gonna be about right when it's dry. So I'm gonna release this dyeing video tomorrow on one condition and it's a really really small condition but it's a condition that's going to keep me out of prison if you're going to watch my video and you're going to comment you've got to spell dying properly okay um, on my walnut dyeing video so the video that I showed you how to dye with walnut crystals I had so many comments where people had spelled dying incorrectly not too much of a problem, you might think, just missing one E. However, when the comment reads, thank you so much, I'm no longer scared of dying. Thank you so much, you've really helped me out with my dying. Thank you so much, I've got lots of extra tips for dying. I was expecting the local gendarmes to be at the front door, <laughs> wondering what kind of strange cross-stitch cult I have got going on dragging me off and that I'd be in some little cell trying to work out how I was going to cross stitch with no needle and a pair of kids plastic safety scissors. So folks, <laughs> please, dying. D-Y-E-I-N-G, not D-Y-I-N-G. <laughs> but honestly, go and look at the video. It is the simplest, quickest method for dying that I've ever used and I love it. And I hope that you will too. Happy mail. I've got some happy mail. 
my first Happy Mail was what just landed on the floor. And I had this little package through um, via Peakside Needleworks. And it's from Christina from Wild Cyrus Snaps. Because I helped her out a little bit, and I mean a tiny bit, um, with the printing of her freebie. I just checked whether something would print on my phone. Um, and she sent me some pins. So just another button company, little carrot pins. And she sent me carrot cake by Belsoir. Now I have never stitched with Belsoir before, but it's lovely, it's so soft. Look, I can even have a Belsoir moustache. It's so soft. 12 stranded silk five yards 12 stranded silk so stitching using even one or two strands that is going to go a really super long way so thank you so much for those Christina I'm really really grateful you didn't have to do that at all but thank you so much and my other happy mail put those there. my other happy mail um, comes from Dorothy from I'm gonna have to try try my best now historisch Stichmuster. Debbie did I do good Debbie, help me. Um, and she contacted me and offered me a free chart on the Silk app. Um, I've got an, an Apple um, iPhone. Um, you need to have the iPhone for the app to work. It's not available on Android. And it's similar um, to Pattern Keeper. So it's a, a digital pattern that you can um, mark your stitches off on, you can zoom in on it, you can see how much you've done, where you're going and I love Pattern Keeper. Um, I don't use it as much mainly because I haven't got back to my long dog for a long time um, but I really really want to try this and the chart that I um, was gifted was American Gardens, um, not American Homes, I keep saying American Homes but American Gardens and here are the threads I might just keep them talk about faff around I might just keep them on the white for now because then you can see the the different colors so these are the DMC I think it's probably most of the DMC I don't know if it's every single one and you can see on the chart that it's made in eight blocks four are white four are blue in fact two are lighter blue and two are darker blue I was not going to stitch all that dark blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew mine in eight blocks and I'm going to sew them together. I haven't quite decided how, but we will worry about that another day. Let's not st stop the actual how we're going to do things from taking away us actually doing things. We will work it out later. So this is my white. This is some 38 count white that I bought from Lakeside Needlecraft. And I understand that 38 count is being discontinued by what I got. So that makes me really super sad. And, excuse me, two of the pieces that I dyed are for this chart. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see the difference between the two. I won't show you too much because I do show you this in the video. But that is the paler one. Excuse the big crease. And I'm going to use that side rather than the more mottled side. And these, just because this is how my fabric ended up in two, two smaller pieces, those are the slightly darker ones. So that was lovely. A lovely happy mail to have the chart. And thank you so much for that. Right. I just wanted to run through some of my favourite picks from the Needlework Expo that's coming up. Um, I'm going to start, this is why I'm sort of sitting a bit more squiffy to this side so I've got some room to put some pictures up. I have printed off, there we are, I'm going to put the pictures up next to me, but I have printed off, just in black and white, some of my favourites. I think there's 10. No, nope, there's more than 10. Oh well. I'll go through them nice and quick. Um, because the one I'm going to start with, Kathy Barrick. 
she's done a multiplication table. She must have heard me. She must have heard me. It must have been me. Um, it is called Amelia Prescott. Um, or the Amelia Prescott is part of the name. I've managed to cut off the actual proper name. Um, by Kathy Barrick. I cannot wait to get my hands on this one. I literally cannot wait to get my hands on this one. Kathy Barrick has absolutely knocked it out of the park, this Needlework Expo. Um, and the other one that I like is called A Quaker Dwelling. It's immense. It's absolutely immense. So that is definitely going to be on my list. Um, if we keep it, in, keep it in the family, her daughter, the lovely Liz Matthews, has done two as well. She's done an engraving chart. And I'm not sure if that's the name of it because the picture I've got doesn't show the name. And another one which says gather here with grateful hearts, which is a bird sat in amongst some branches, which I really, really like as well. I have also earmarked, let's go, um, one from Lardy Da called Elizabeth Charnley or Charnley, um, which is a beautiful sampler. Um, Michelle Bendy, Bendy Stitchy Designs, Berry Bird. I really like that one as well. Good job, Michelle. I love that one. Um, I have also got um, a Manny de Donna one. And again, I've managed to cut the name off of it. I'll see if I can find it and put it along the bottom. Um, but it's all about poisons and potions and abracadabra and all of that sort of great stuff, which I love. Um, Nikki's Creations Button Girl. I love that. I lo you know what I'm like for buttons. Come on, you know what I'm like for buttons. Um, October House Fibre Arts Floss Tube Friends. How could we not? How could we not want that one? I think that one's going to be so popular. Um, Lucy Beam's got two actually that I really love. One's called Call for the Doctor. And it says, call for the doctor, call for the nurse, call for the lady with the alligator first. And it's a lady stood there with an alligator. That is immense. Um, another one from Lucy Bean, which is a Halloween one, which is like a, a bottle ship, ship bottle, a bottle with a ship in it. But it's got a ghost and it's got um, Halloween and it's got a shark going into a pumpkin eye. I love that. Erica Michaels has got um, a couple of new berries out, which are the Bristol berries. Love some Bristols. That will mean more to uh, people in the UK probably than it does in America. Um, and we've got to have a snigger when it says uh, Bristols. Um, the one by oh, Spring Creek Samplers, why did that not come to my head? Um, called Lighting the Way. I absolutely adore that. I absolutely adore that. That is going to be, again, very high on my list of things to do. Who else have I got left? I have got left. Ah, very special, very special. So Pantini Pantini continues on with her monthly charts. But if you don't follow her on Instagram or on her Facebook, you need to. She's been showing some close-ups of the pins that she's doing for Christmas designs. Now, I don't think they're necessarily ones that are going to be released for Needlework Expo, although she's, she's shown um, the doghouse one and the cat house one, and she's shown a bookworm one, and obviously the, um, the continuation of the monthly charts, the ones that I've been doing. Um, but she started showing these pins. I would love to see how they are done. I would love to see how she does those. They are so gorgeous. So definitely check out her. Um, those are my picks. Those are my picks, guys. Down below as well, I'd love to know what your picks are. I don't want to be missing anything, you see. I have this, this big fear of missing out. So I don't want to be missing anything. So if you've got something that I need to see, let me know below. Where are we now? Where are we now? Hall. Cool. I have got a little bit of haul, a little bit of haul. I have got from Lakeside Needlecraft, I bought the last little bit of 38 count that they had and I bought two packs of size 28 peacemakers which I had heard some really really good things about. 
I must admit I'm not one of those people that can really tell the difference between needles so maybe I've just not found my perfect one yet so I've never tried a peacemaker that I know of um, but yeah it wasn't Wyatt Earp's gun called peacemaker as well I bought from Amazon you all know my scissor issue that they always end up down the back of a sofa so I bought three pairs of those kind of like peacocky blue scissors now these were in the beauty section and they were six quid for all three of them so they're not any great quality like needlework scissors or anything like that but for, for popping in project bags um, and then having scissors to hand and the transitory nature of my scissors they will be they will be perfect they will do the job I bought I'm going to show you these first some trims now I bought these from Facebook marketplace um, oh, trust me I just moved it the clock face that I finished had a beaded trim um, around the outside of the clock and I really liked that trim uh, and I didn't have any more of it so a lady was selling a meter and a half of the beaded trim and she was selling them for like three pounds so yes I got a green I got a white I got a red and I got this gorgeous purple so I can't wait to use those in the future they are pretty chunky in fact when they arrived in the post I was like what are they can't remember ordering those but yeah that's what they were and then the other things I ordered whoops whack the light um Annie B's folk art um autumn is a second spring and it says autumn is a second spring where every leaf is a flower I just love that one and then I went to Brenda Keys because I wanted this and I'm sure you've seen it advertised I can confirm that it is immense I can't show you a flick through of it because it is literally just charts for people for boats for birds for houses for deer for cows for sheep for churches flowers trees alphabets um bee skeps kettles oh, literally everything in all sorts of different sizes now i've got a project that i'm going to use this for that i'm going to show you next week um and I'm going to ask you to join me on the project as well. You don't have to have one of these to join me on the project at all, but I'm going to use mine. So I'll show you that next week. And then, although there's thousands of charts in here, it still couldn't travel by itself. It's not, it's not a big enough group. And so I picked up this one. Mm, that is a very shiny very shiny and you the inside is a, a photograph so I don't know if it's going to get any bigger uh, any better this is called what is it called sampler houses and so it's just like a nine patch and that nine patch is actually solid stitching so it's pretty much full coverage in there with the alphabets around the outside I've always loved that I have always loved that one so I picked up that and then I picked up this one and have you ever had a chart from Brenda Keys before they are super clear really nice big charts they come with and this one's called the sampler's wife so they come with a little separate thread legend which is really handy or not a legend but a list which is really handy so if you've got an LNS and when it's open you could take that with you um, there is a beautiful card to put on the back of your fi finished piece and 
put it up the right way Michelle if you so wish there is a thread organizer as well so the second one I bought is called what did I just say it's called the sailor's wife and now I saw this somebody did and I'm sorry I can't remember who a look through of their local LN, not a local LNS their LNS not a local local LNS um, they did a, a walkthrough and I saw this as a, as a sample um, now I'd never seen this stitched up before and I have to say on her website um, some of Brenda Key's photography is really quite dark so it's quite hard to see and I saw this stitched up and it looked amazing it looked amazing so there's that one there and it says for my dearest love he works upon the sea on the waves that blow free blow wild and free he splices the ropes and he mends the sails while southward he rolls to the home of the whale so those of you that watch me before will know that my partner in the summer um, is a, a dolphin watching guide so he's not out there rigging the sails it's not um, you know the life of a sailor but I still quite like I still quite like that one and there we have it a really busy busy episode I hope you've enjoyed it I hope you found something that you like something that's inspired you something that's going to make you go and grab your stitching do join me for the dyeing video if that interests you at all and I will see you next week stay classy stitchers <laughs>